Hi, and welcome to Megalia Rose Studio. My name is Kathy, and in a previous video, I showed you how to draw a nice template drawing of bamboo. In this video, I'm going to be showing you how to create an interesting impressionistic painting in watercolor of that bamboo using simply arches paper, some watercolor paints, a spray bottle, and some Glad Press and Seal or any plastic wrap you have in the kitchen. Sounds like fun. Let's get started. Here you can see I have transferred just part of my original bamboo template from the drawing. I did the full template onto the jinwashi, but toward the front there you can see I've used a one quarter sheet of watercolor paper. That would be Arches 140 pound cold press, which is one of my favorites. The nice thing about this size is it mats and fits nicely into a 16 by 20 frame. So I hope you have yours all ready to go. I have made pretty dark marks on the watercolor paper with my graphite pencil because we're going to be doing somewhat of a semi-wash. I, I actually call it, it my spray, spray bottle technique. So make sure the lines are dark enough that you can see through the layers and glazes of watercolor. So let's move on. Here I have my drawing. I have taped it onto a piece of gator board. Any normally strong um, support board is advised at this point. And I've set it in a tray. This is going to catch any drips that might fall when I spray the water and put on the paint. Uh, the little eraser there in the corners, I was just cleaning up some areas there. So that's not really important. So, so I want to uh, make some large puddles of different colors. I've used a, an old tray I have and I've put uh, in each corner one of the paint colors and the ones I'm going to be using are Quinacridin Burnt Orange, I'll be using Deep Sap Green, Sap Green, Thalo Turquoise, Indigo, and sometimes I will also use things such as Azo Green, a different green, but this, these are the, the um, six that I'm going to be using right today. Here I've set up all the supplies I'm going to need. I'm going to, uh, you've already seen the support board with the watercolor paper and uh, marked with the bamboo in the tray. I have my colors on the tray. I have a dropper for clear water which I will be using to drop into each of the paints to get the consistency I want. I've been using uh, quill brushes. This is uh, mostly, uh, use a number six and a number two quill brush. Two containers of clear water. I like to use clear containers so you can see when the water gets discolored. A coarse spray bottle. You have to be sure that it's a coarse spray and not a fine mist um, and just experiment with different spray bottles. And then I'm here using Glad Press and Seal. Any, any press and seal or any cling wrap can be used. So if you don't go out and buy something, if you already have some cling wrap like saran wrap in your in your cupboard, in the kitchen, you go ahead and give those an experimental try in this technique. Here you can see the tray with the um, paints that have had water added to them. There's a little bit of azo there on the right. You see, can see the other colors pretty much. And these are going to be ready to drop in. But first I'm going to be using the spray bottle to moisten the paper, my bamboo image, and be prepared to uh, have drips. It's okay. That's what the tray's for. Well, look at the colors we got. First I took my coarse spray bottle and I just sprayed sp just the water randomly around. Um, no real planned, just making sure it's not solidly uh, wet, but that the spray is, you know, getting certain areas wet. I then start with the lightest color, get my brush in there, and I just randomly drop that color in around. Nothing again really planned. This is sort of the fun of this. We're going to see how colors mix. Then I go to the next darkest color on and on until I get to my darkest color or the most intense color. I final color that I put on here was the uh, Thalo Turquoise. So now look at that and let's see what we're going to do, but get a piece of that cling wrap or the press and seal ready, the same size as your painting. This is where things get really interesting. You take your cling wrap or your press and seal and press it onto the wet paper and make wrinkles in it. Scrunch it up a little bit with your fingers here and there and press it down 
and you'll see underneath how the colors will start to blend. This is a really fascinating. Un unlike a pour, which is usually your traditional one color from you know the red, your blues, and your yellows, um, you can use any colors with this and get different effects and learn how some of them play well together and others don't. But it is always guaranteed to be fun. So now what I'm going to do is put some weights on this. I'm going to have a flat board I lay on there with two heavy books and I'm going to let it sit there for several hours so that the colors will soak into that paper and there will be some interesting lines left from the cling wrap or your press and seal. Before I put the weights on I wanted to uh, take a close-up detail shot of how it looks with that um, paper, that thin clear paper over that uh, splattering of color and it's um, going to dry very interestingly. I'm, I'm sort of interested to see how this turns out. Under this uh, gator board and those two heavy books my painting is um, settling in and I'm just going to walk away and let it sit for a few hours. I have removed my press and seal and uh, am very um, interested and pleased to see where this is going to be going. As you can see yeah, I can see the pencil marks still there. So this is going to help me because now we're going to begin a process of defining the leaves, defining the bamboo stalks, and then we're going to be doing negative painting of a very dark color indigo in all the spaces behind. This is negative painting and it's going to make things look very different. Here's a close-up of some of the um, areas I've ne negatively painted. And I wanted you to see how I treated the leaves in somewhat a stylized manner. I sort of just drew a line through them and um, put a dark and a light green on one side. Uh, utilizing when I paint over the leaf, glazing over it lightly, the patterns underneath that are on the stalks of the bamboo kind of show through. You can see this is just one coat of the indigo on the background, the negative painted part, and you can see that uh, it doesn't cover completely. You'll need to have at least um, two, possibly three coats. The um, left hand upper side there you can see two coats and uh, it's definitely starting to look more like a, a uniform dark blackish blue color. Moving on to the uh, next stage, I'm going to show you a larger um, photo of the painting. Here you can see um, the actual size of the painting um, from the one before with the close-up. So that I've also added some areas on the stalks uh, in between the segments of the bamboo uh, just to give it more of a feeling of the actual plant, how it is structured. I simply put a line, a very wet line, of um, burnt umber under that area, that line that separates them. And then I took a quinacridone purple and sort of dripped it in and let it run. So you can see I'm trying to get some textural interest going on there. So I went ahead, um, I will continue doing that um, as I progress across with the negative painting and enhancing those segment areas. The reason there looks like a light line above that dark area I painted in is I've simply added that same combination wash in a very thin, very thin, very light, almost uh, invisible line above that, leaving some white areas, light areas. So it, again, it, it sort of mimics bamboo. Simply a photo of some of the progress moving with that negative painting across. The painting is basically complete at this point. I've completed uh, two quotes of negative painting, the dark areas behind the bamboo. This got the leaves all together, did all the segments, and I'm pretty pleased. It's, it's done, basically. The last thing I want to do uh, for fun is I want to take some gold gouache. It's made by Winsor Newton, and I want to make up a thin little puddle of that and a very stiff brush that I use, and I'm going to splatter that gold across the um, bamboo stalks. I'm going to put protective paper on the background so that I don't get gold there, but actually on the stalks only. Here's my favorite um, splatter gold, and it is again the Winsor Newton Designer's Gouache Gold. I have a favorite brush. It's actually a kindergarten uh, poster paint brush that um, I've kept for as many years as I can remember, and it's very stiff, and it makes a great spatter pattern for me. Uh, up in the upper left-hand corner, you can actually see the gold gouache, and, and it uh, has a beautiful quality 
It can be used uh, straight like that or it can be spattered. It's, it's a fun thing to have in your little repertoire. Here you can see how I've laid a, a piece of um, paper across a, an area there that's um, going to be spattered and I will do that to both sides. But I wanted you to be able to see the actual spatter close up in this photo. It adds a fun fun element to, to certain paintings. I don't use it often, but sometimes it's just the right thing I feel in my innate ability to figure out what I want to express, that it works out great. Uh, in just a moment, you'll see the finished painting. Here's a one view of the completed painting. Um, I don't know if you can see all of the spatter and details, but um, I'm going to go ahead and, and take another format photo, and which I'll show you next. And here's a little bit of a close-up. I hope you've enjoyed the process and I really hope you give it a try. It's a lot of fun. And um, I'm going to be using my template in the future doing some batik work, some yupo work, and just generally experimenting and having fun. Not a lot of work since I already have that drawing ready to go.